All right, well, um, just got done with, uh, with practice 12. Um, we went full pads today. Today will be the last day of full before we go uh, full again on Saturday. Uh, just before we get rolling, uh, big shout out to Coach Erickson, Coach Mole this weekend. Both had sweeps in the conference, which is hard to do. Um, got a chance to watch the baseball team Friday night as a full football team, which was really cool. Um, heckled, heckled their, their dugout, which was fun. Our guys enjoyed that. Um, men's and women's track team doing their thing. Um, got a guy running under 10. So let's see about football maybe potentially this summer for him, um, for Abdul Rashid there. And I don't know if Coach Jenkins will be down, but you guys can ask him here when I'm done. So. Um, other than that, um, you know, the biggest thing for us right now is just fine tuning some things defensively, uh, continuing to work on our fundamentals in terms of tackling, getting off blocks, lining up fast, all of the little things. Uh, offensively, continuing to install, continuing to, to do things that we wanted to work on here in year two as we've continued to grow offensively. Um, I think continuing to grow at the quarterback position and the understanding that we have there. But really, really happy with where we are. I think we're, we're practicing like a veteran group. Uh, it feels very veteran group in there. Knock on wood, we've stayed really healthy. Uh, we've got to go finish this week out healthy, and, and then we'll announce the format for the spring game here at the end of the week. Um, it'll be a fun environment. Just uh, found out, sold out um, in terms of public tickets, uh, which is awesome. It'll be a fun environment Saturday afternoon here at Corbett. Our guys are excited about it. We'll do some fun things with the spring game in terms of our guys and how we're going to split the team and all of that. So we'll release that at the end of the week. But really happy with where we are. Um, you know, really proud of the veteran guys that are here, really proud of the newcomers. I know I've said the newcomers a couple of times as I've stood up here. But man, I, I feel like every guy that came in, both high school and transfer, um, has been a, a real legitimate impact guy for us have created competition, have competed at a high level, and culturally bringing them into what we've built here in a year, it's been nothing short of fun, exciting, uh, fascinating really to watch those guys incorporate into the program. And I'm really, really solid and happy with where we are. We got a long way to go. Um, you know, I'm, I'm being optimistic in a lot of ways, but we got a long way to go. But man, I, I feel like through 12 practices, we're exactly where I was hoping we would be. So. I will turn it over for questions. Coach, last year, everything was a question mark with spring. Different dynamic this year. You not only have proven quantities, you got some exclamation points. How different is it this year than last year? I think it's really different this year than last year. Last year, so much of just setting a standard um, and holding guys to the standard. This is how we come to meetings. This is how we take notes. This is how we come out to practice. This is the standard of the energy you expect at practice. This is how I take coaching. This is how I coach my teammates. I mean, everything you had to reteach. And I think that's the one positive when you come into a program that hadn't had success recently is the guys that are here are, are going to innately allow you to coach them because they know that there's got to be a better way. That part is actually easier when you take, take a place like that over. Year two, detail of everything. You know, I keep hammering home with our staff, keep hammering home with the players. The detail is where we're going to win games. We talk about winning in the margins. You can actually attack the margins, the margins being third down, the margins being red zone, the margins being situational football, two minute, little things within each play, little things things within each alignment. You could go to two, three hundred level now and you're not you're not waiting for anybody to catch up. The young guys, the new guys, we've took the winner and tried to catch them up as much as we could, but you're teaching the detail. Does that equate to wins? I don't know, but it certainly feels like it gives you a better chance. Coach, from the first day of spring to now, one or two players that have really jumped up Yeah, I would say offensively, Jaquan Smith. Um, Jaquan has taken that step that we were hoping a young guy, a freshman that played a little bit would take, um, developed a level of confidence. He's always been able to run. He's always been physical. It's been learning how to play receiver in this offense. Been learning how to be a college athlete at this level. 
man, I feel like he's put it all together. He had an indoor track season in there to help him, um, but he's really put it all together. He's given us the ability to move him around some, given us the ability to be flexible positionally with him. He's different because of the way he runs, but he, his, what really makes him different is he's kind of put it all together. He's highly intelligent, so he's always known it. Now you're able to go coach the next level, the, the, the releases and having counters to releases and top of routes and all those things. So offensively, I would say him. Defensively, I would say, um, I would probably say Ruck, um, who I know you guys are going to talk to here in a second. Ruck is, and I've known Ruck since he was a freshman. I remember him pulling up to the dorm uh, at the last spot and his family dropping him off and, and him having a ton of success as a freshman. Ruck has really brought a cool energy to the defensive backfield, but really to the entire defense. He's come in, fit right in. Guys like AB, guys like uh, Logan Berryhill, Hammy, Stokes, these veteran guys, have, Tab and Ward, have taken him under their wing, and he's just blossomed. Um, ben Knox has done an incredible job with him, a guy that isn't practicing right now, but he's taken Ruck under his wing. Um, and he's really elevated the level of play at that corner position for us. So I guess two guys that that probably aren't household names certainly but but guys that have stood out to me as taking a giant step and playing really confidently right now coach my last question thank you for your time today how important is it to have people in the locker room that have been through the last spring and can actually sit down with people and say hey here's what to expect from this coaching staff i think i think it's monumental to have guys in the locker room the locker room in general is, is a critical place. It's, it's where conversations happen. It's where, where the culture of your room, of your team is exposed or it's, or it's enriched, you know, and, and certainly the expectations, the standards, the leadership in that locker room is absolutely critically important. That's what, to be honest with you, keeps me up at night is what is the tone of that locker room and having leaders in there that you can count on Year one, you had no idea. Year two, you feel like you've got a really good grasp, but that's constantly what you're working on. And, and I, to be honest with you, I, I always think you're working on that through how you recruit, what you recruit, what you tell people in recruiting, and then obviously how you handle the players. For us, it's really simple. Like the be who you say you are mantra is, is everything. Like there's a lot of people that could say a lot of things about me, but I, I do what I say I'm gonna do and I try to live up to that standard at all times, pushing everybody within our program to do that. Certainly our coaching staff and our players, that's how you, you can control at least to a point of what the vibe in that locker room is. Guys that are happy, unhappy, guys that, that feel like they're getting what they should or shouldn't, as long as it's exactly what we say we're doing, um, I'm comfortable with it. But certainly the leadership in the locker room bringing the guys in and, and letting them know what the standard is, is start small positionally and works throughout the whole team. Alex, when you took this job 16 months ago, whatever it was, you kind of bemoaned the dearth of offensive linemen in the program. 16 months later, how do you feel about that position in general? Yeah, man, I remember looking at that depth chart the first time and as guys were coming in the office saying, hey, I'm going to go here, <laughs> I'm going to go here. and. I, I'll be honest with you, I give Coach Hoodie a ton of credit um, because he went out as, as a guy that really his first time having the room by himself went out. Uh, and there's a lot of people that helped, certainly Joel Gordon, and really was all hands on deck. And we went out and attacked recruiting that position. And, you know, we had to go get some guys out of the portal, junior college. I feel like I watched more O linemen that, that first month and a half than, than I ever have. Um, and, and really put a group of guys together that I want to say in a lot of ways got us through the year, to be honest with you, you know, and, and I, I know we talked about Mike Lofton last week, but Mike really kind of led the charge there in terms of we put a ton on Mike and said, Mike, this is, this is your place, this is your group. And, you know, had some incredible highs last year, had some lows, you know. I, I think the glaring stat that I'm sure it, you could bring up is the sacks and keeping that group going and really figuring out why those sacks are happening and a lot of different reasons. Uh, play calls, uh, timing of play calls, protectionally in terms of backs, tight ends, the quarterback, 
wideouts getting open, be, staying open. There's so many reasons that went into it, but that group just continued to grow um, throughout the year and took so much pride in what they were doing. But I think what I'm most proud of is those guys that we brought in a year ago that kind of sat there and watched James Jenkins, TJ Lawrence, who, who came in, uh, Deontay Bowie, who missed the year with the surgery. Like those guys just kind of sat there and, and watched and watch the culture in that room go. Right now, the culture in that room, it, I would say, is at an elite level. And, and by that, I mean how much guys are spending time in here just teaching the young guys, how much got time guys are spending in here after working on their craft, meeting throughout the day with just totally voluntary coming in and saying, I want to know more, I want to know more. And I think that culture really headed up by, by Mike. But, I mean, Zane Herring in a lot of ways, um, Derek Bowman in a lot of ways, these guys that I think just needed their opportunity and found it here, uh, it's really become a bright spot of, of what we're doing. RJ Perry has taken a huge step this spring, again, because there's guys around him that have held him to a standard, but we're still we're still recruiting like crazy. I feel like that's the one number that it's like Coach Hoodie every day, man, can I take another one? Can I take another one? Can I take another one? And I don't know if we're gonna stop. We're just gonna keep taking guys there because you want to develop, you want to build and develop with young guys. You want to get them in your weight program. You want them to sit there for a couple of years and learn and grow. And what we did last year was really hard when you, you got a bunch of transfers and you, you put them together and you tried to get them to gel as quickly as you can. I think now as these young guys are progressing, I still feel like the depth has got to continue to grow, but I feel like it's really become a strong suit in terms of culture development within our program. We didn't have enough line last year, um, and and we do, you know, we do to a point now. We're trying to be really smart with those guys now, because it is like, I don't know if it hits you until you really go sit there and watch practice what those guys do the entire day. I mean, they train to go attack people every down. I tell guys all the time in recruiting. I'm really honest with them, and it, it helps to have Hoodie, who it hasn't been that long that he played. And Devontae Danzi, who works with that position, played at a high level. And, and Mirko, that group of guys that work with that with the O-line, like it's a younger group. They played anywhere from five to seven years ago. And I sit there with, it, with that group and the recruit and his family, and I, literally I tell them, this is the hardest position, not to play, but like what you have to go through on a daily basis. And by the way, most people don't ask, man, how's the O-line doing? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, and so it's, I tell, I straight up tell those guys, man, this is the hardest, least rewarding position you will ever play. It is grueling. It is hard. It is tough. It is physical. It is violent. And you got to be mentally, physically tough. And, and it's, if a, if a young man ever looks at me, like, I'm like, cool, man, we're good. Next, like ain't doing it. And what they've done is, is built a really, really powerful culture in there. But to play an inner squat scrimmage, yes, you need about you need at least about 14, 15 guys, um, and we're being really smart here through this week with some of those veteran guys, making sure we're good. So there may be some guys that that play both sides yeah. in the inner squad, but yeah, like to go into spring and ha we I think we went in with 18 guys, I'm like all right, we got a shot here, and and because a lot of it is to be able to rep everybody else, you don't want to take double reps with with guys. But yeah, last year, I, man, like uh, those are some rough nights we had there. Yeah, the energy has been what's been the most fun part of coming out here every day. These guys are competing like crazy. You know, we've it also helps. We've had a ton of recruits at every practice, so there's like a crowd. Uh, you know, the last two scrimmages we had, I think, 350 people here on Good Friday. We had 450 people here on Saturday. So there's always like a little bit of an audience, which helps. Uh, that certainly wasn't the case a year ago. So, but the energy, the juice level. I'm telling you, there, there's something contagious in that group. It's fun to come out and see these guys uh, really compete at a high level and, and get coached and coach each other. Um, I said it said it a couple of times, but this is the most fun I've ever had coaching. And to be honest with you, it's because of these players. And I think our staff has done a really good job of, of continuously bringing a level of energy that you'd expect. But these guys, like the, I've warned them going into spring, like do not let this get monotonous. It can't be monotonous. That's my job as the head coach is to create a lack of 
monotony and, and continue to invigorate new things, uh, they're still 18 to 22 year olds. So the energy has been, I think, really, 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 really high. The couple of times where you felt a lull, we brought them up and I said, man, that's not the standard. Like we got to go. And it's been, it's been really fun. Spring game, like you said, I think it is. It's a celebration at the end of spring. It's a way for, for um, these guys to go play in front of a bigger crowd. Uh, it's a way for us to get recruits here this weekend. Uh, we'll have a ton of guys here. And it, it's cool for them to see the fan engagement. And it's cool to see a bunch of green and gold in the stands. That's huge for us. Spring is a huge time. It's even bigger now than it's ever been because of the calendar and the recruiting calendar continuously changing, speed up. Like there's guys making decisions. And for guys, for recruits and their families to come on campus, one, see a crowd, two, uh, see the energy our guys are playing with, that's infectious. And I think we're recruiting at a really high level right now. Um, and I think we're gonna continue to do so. But that's, this spring game is it's kind of a piece of all of that. Our player families, for them to be able to come in here and see see their guy, their their sons, grandsons, um, nephews play. Just a fun day. I've always enjoyed spring games. And then with an actual game still months away, what do you specifically look for at like this point in, in the year in the calendar itself? What do you feel? Yeah, I think I think the detail, hammering home hammering home the detail of everything we're doing. Uh, football wise, certainly um, I, I know I already talked about it, but truly fine tuning timing of everything, the base fundamental techniques, and then being able to take the, the scheme to another level. But recruiting, same deal, detail, detail, detail. Like, are we, are we on the right guys? Are we recruiting them the right way? Um, so I would say detail would probably be the word. For a Mars Brown Bunkley, I, I, I think AB has grown so much since we've been here. And, and he is, he's having fun. He's always had fun. He's a natural energy guy at practice uh, to the point actually we've had to tell him to slow down running around um, in, in, in when he's not on the field because his GPS will go crazy. He's, he's got an infectious personality. Uh, for him, I think continuing to grow, fine tune his skill set. You know, he's played safety, he's played corner continuing to fine tune his skill set. He gives us some position flexibility there. He's played some nickel, some dime this spring. Again, his next step is now he knows the corner position. What else can he do back there? Because he brings a sense of physicality in the back end. Um, he's done a really good job of continuing to learn the entire package, again, to allow us to get our best five out there, sometimes six. He, he has done a really good job for him. And this has been the conversation really with him since December. It's not just, not just what kind of teammate he is, how he handles himself. It's also, man, like this is your last year. This is your opportunity. The, what you put on film now really, really matters in terms of your future football wise. And so he's taken that to heart. He's really worked hard on getting his process right in, in terms of eating and sleeping and understanding that the standard for him is really, really high every day if, if he's going to continue to go keep playing. But really proud of him. He brings a really cool, infectious energy, always has since we've been here. Coach, uh, you mentioned around bowl season that you had a couple of players that were uh, high schoolers practicing with the team around that time. They're also training with Coach Stern. How pivotal is this stretch for them, that foundation of not only the bowl season, Yeah, I think it gives those guys a chance to to play early. Um, the guys that came in, you know, it's I, I think it's really hard to come in mid year as a high school guy. And I'm really honest with families when when young guys are thinking about it, because you got to remember there's no transition period for them. The bowl, the guys that came into bowl practice, they had a little bit of time, but the guys that didn't weren't here for the bowl game, Rodney Hill, Xavier Hamilton. There's a handful of those guys, Josh Porter, Alvon Isaac, like those guys. They come in the day that they move in the next day, they're in 15 credit hours. They're in the middle of winter workouts and conditioning. Like it is a hard, hard deal. Um, and I give those guys a lot of credit, but it's, it's huge for them. All those guys I just named like are competing to play this fall. I think they're gonna go into the summer and now it's not learning 
the standard, learning the culture, learning where my locker is. Now those guys are literally, they're taking their game to another level in terms of their detail of what's going on. And so they're giving themselves, they've got six months to be able to, not just physically, but mentally get themselves ready to play. I think those guys being here in the spring, it's, it gives them a huge, huge, huge opportunity to help us in the fall. Um, on top of academically getting another semester in, like giving themselves a chance to graduate here with a master's degree at some point. Um, so it's absolutely pivotal. Not everybody's ready to do it. Um, I, and very open with families. But I know this, there's a couple of guys that signed that didn't come in mid-year that come to practice almost every day that are sitting here like, man, I wish I did. Um, but some guys are enjoying senioritis spring of their senior year, and I remember that as well. Some of the greatest times. Yep. There's no football. Any questions for Coach? All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Go Bulls. Right. Um, I've been to some of the basketball games, actually. Very fun. Um, so just seeing that, um, growing up, USF, I know the football team was amazing back in the day, winning and stuff like that. Then it took a hold down. So just seeing them, I feel like just holding that standard, I feel like it's most definitely possible. I know we get a lot of – everybody's been getting that the uh, shine about that 76 season, winning that bowl game. We're not really listening to that, but – the sky's the limit for this team. I've only been here for about, I mean, what, four months now. And I mean, it's just been special. I've been, it's been a special thing to be a part of. So I'm just really excited for this season to just follow that basketball team. What's the big change from where you were to here? Um, the big change, I feel like we're able to be like community. So like everybody can just be their self here. It's no like business thing or politics. I feel like Coach Goers keeps Every, everybody at a level-headed position. And so, like, if you're a, a top guy on the team, it's like you get treated no different than somebody, a walk-on, I feel like here. So, I mean, he just keeps everybody together and just humble as possible. Thanks. No problem. You get to play in a scrimmage game, right? an exhibition game, a right. game nonetheless on Saturday. Uh, what, how, how has that excitement you guys? Because, you know, you've just been killing yourself for the past couple of weeks. You, you finally get to see, you know, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Right. So, um, we heard it's supposed to be sold out, so we're, we're very excited for that, just to see the fans. It's my first time with this fan, so um, it's just exciting. We've been working nonstop, um, just getting better with each other, just growing a bond together. So we're just ready to just unleash all of that in front of the fans just to show what we had this season. Like the president. Football brought the excitement back to USF. And I asked him the same question. The basketball team kept that excitement. It's 
track team won the indoor. A lot of excitement now at USF. How important is it for that excitement to just pan over and to spread? Oh man, it's it's really important. Uh, I'm new here, so you know I'm just kind of getting getting thrown into it, and uh, I think we're building something special here. I think that's kind of why I'm here. I think that's kind of what you know I have a big high expectations on myself. So. Um, just using that energy, using that as fuel, using that as motivation and to take it day by day and put the best foot forward. What's the biggest difference between where you were and where you are now? Well, for me, I think, I think uh, the environment around here, you know, we, we practice very competitively. I think that's kind of the biggest difference that I noticed. Um, obviously, the weather's nice and stuff like that, too, because I'm, I'm from up north. You know, it's cold, chilly, stuff like that. So, um, and other than that, you know, just being around a uh, you know high character people. You know, Coach Golis, Coach Ad, the guys that recruited me, and you know the other coaches as well. So I think that's the biggest difference. Every receiver comes into the huddle after a play and says to the quarterback, "I'm open, throw me the ball." <laughs> that still go on now? Well, not not really because we're playing up tempo and but you know. But you get to the sideline. Absolutely, <laughs> and then also as well, I think the offense is is very receiver friendly. You know, for a guy like me and, and other guys out there like Naeem and, and, uh, and Sean and Michael Brown, Stevens, all those guys, you know, they, we, we want to throw the ball downfield. And I think, you know, we, we kind of expect it. You know what I mean? It's not like something that hey, I have to tell them to throw me the ball as much. Because I think that's what we do and that's what we want to do. So. I'm going to steal one more. There's four or five guys out in every package. You don't get the ball. How important is it to go find somebody, not just to block, just get in their way? just to give that guy a shot to make a big play? Very important. We, we do a lot of touch plays on the perimeter. I think probably more than anybody in the country, I would think. And uh, it's very important to make sure you're blocking downfield and blocking for your guys to, so it can go from a you know, five to 10 yard play into a, to a big, you know, big explosive. And that's what we want. We want big explosive plays. And whether that's getting it out quick and having guys running open field, open space, making moves on guys, or, or getting behind people and throwing it over the top of them. So very important. Oh, Purdue? Yeah. <laughs> nah, I didn't, I didn't watch it. I, was, I went to sleep because, you know, practice is early. We practice early in the morning, so I went to bed. I didn't watch it. But um, just I text some of my teammates because I, I, had, I had a memory of, you know, just being in, being in one of my guys' apartments and just watching the basketball game, and that would kind of remind me. So I just, you know, shoot him a text and told, him, told, him, told the guys good luck, and that was it. So. Even you didn't look bigger in person? Absolutely. Absolutely. No, he's he's huge. He uh, when he when he walks out on campus, or he's on his little scooter. He has a scooter, a big guy like that. You know, he's riding a scooter, and, and I was like, is that he's really a human? Like this is crazy, <laughs> you know. So, but nah, he's definitely uh, he's definitely a freak. So, you uh, you came down here. You're you're playing with a quarterback who had a breakthrough year last year, Byron Brown. What's your impressions of him having such a great great breakthrough in him? Oh man, just just freakishly athletic. Um, Able to run it, able to throw it, able to extend plays, throwing the run, just putting it all together, you know, and then kind of just being around him and learning, you know, how, how intelligent he is and stuff like that. So I think I think he has a chance to be really special, uh, you know, and I got to do my part to help him out, you know, so the sky's the limit for him. What about, what about this receiver room in general? They didn't have a chance to be special. There were question marks about its depth. What have you seen so far from this unit in general? Absolutely. I think. There's a lot of guys in the room with with experience, and then there's a lot of young guys that are coming along that are able to to, to kind of play and, and fill the role that we need them to fill. And I think, you know, being an old guy myself, um, just just kind of using the experience that I have, and I think it's going to be really really special for us this year. Absolutely, man. You know, when I came in, I, you know, obviously it was a handful of guys that I talked to and, you know, and the main thing they, they kind of told me was, you know, things that we, they did last year, you know, some of the things kind of, some of the people, some of the things that we no longer do and we're kind of, you know, trying to 
change it. We're trying to become a winning culture, trying to become a family. And you can definitely see that, you know, not with just the energy outside, but just in the locker room, you know, going up to the second floor and ch chatting it up with the coaches. And you can definitely feel the family, you know, the, the, the family type of program that we're building here. Well, we, I was, we played Tennessee in the, in the Music City Bowl in 2021. Didn't really know them, but we did win, so I kind of hold that over them a little bit sometimes, joke around with them. But, but uh, no, nah, I mean, we kind of just met in the portal, and they, they kind of pulled up on me, and we uh, got a bite to eat, and we just kind of built a relationship from there. And, you know, and I, I trusted those guys, him and Coach LD, and uh, just made my decision. Thank you.